Um, and since Amit, you mentioned the issue of FDI in retail, that seems to be a big uh, point of concern for a number of people. And although the BJP has uh, painted a picture of being very pro, you know, FDI in retail, their own states don't necessarily follow that uh, part of their agenda. But, uh, you know, let's address that issue of FDI in retail since it has come up and it's an uppermost in the minds of many of the business people uh, in our country. So, Amit, I'll let but you go ahead with that. Firstly, um, firstly, BJP's stated opinion is that they are against FDI in retail whether they come into the center or the state. That's number one. But we are not following that. We took our own individual opinion on what we had to do. For Delhi, you see, firstly, the two, we must separate the two parts, FDI and organized retail. They're two separate things. There are already 4,800 organized retail stores in India. They are the big stores like Reliance, Big Bazaar. They already exist. Now, Organized retail was supposed to bring better prices to the farmer, not only lonely look at the consumer. Our real issue is that 40% of our produce spoils before it reaches the market of the farmer. So we have a country which is impoverished in terms of the farmer community and some of the consumers are doing rather well. We think that is unfair. If the organized retail is, a, is capable of giving better prices to the farmers, which they do worldwide, then we are all right in this. No organized retail store in India has been able to do that. So whether you put FDI in the organized, in reliance or not, it is still not going to help it. So that was our stated, and we had asked many people for empirical evidence that if they can prove to us that they would, by just simply putting FDI in the current retail stores, the farmers would get a better price, then we are all for it. But nobody has been able to give us that yet. We are not against FDI as a whole in all industries. Only in retail because of it has been shown to us that it will actually remove a lot of jobs uh, and it only will help a certain set of consumers. In some countries, they have done better because the whole chain, the coal chain, the trucking chain, etc. is very efficient. So they've done better, but India first needs to set up all those if, and you just don't put the money in the front end only. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Amit. Meera, did you want to add to that? Or? Sorry, Meera. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, yeah, sorry. Is, go ahead, you let's start from the beginning. Uh, I completely agree with Amit Pran. And the other thing I would like to say, is that if you look, I mean, FDI and retail has been permitted at a central level for some time, but there isn't a long queue of people waiting to enter India. And I think we must question why that is the case. To the best of my knowledge, and my information is slightly dated, I think there is only Tesco which has filed for a technical collaboration with the Tatas. I think we are all aware that Walmart was sanctioned by FACTA for ostensibly, you know, violating that act in India. And in my discussions with a variety of people, such as the Lord Mayor of London, the Governor General of Canada, you know, a lot of the uh, constables <clears throat> in India, what they are sharing with me is that the perception is that it's so difficult to do business in India honestly without paying a bribe that a lot of their investors are afraid of investing in India because then they would be in violation of laws in their own country, which are anti-corruption and bribery laws. And so to me, one of the things that Ahmadi Party stands for is what will, you know, if we are able to get rid of corruption in India, a lot of foreign investment will start flowing into the country, which at the moment people just simply cannot do. So a lot of this is, uh, if you like, optics. I mean, can the Congress or the UK government tell us who is actually waiting to enter India? Okay, so uh, thank you, Meera, for that. 